Hey there, my fabulous chemistry students. Video seven, one more after this, and we are done. Empirical formulas is today's topic. We need to be able to determine the empirical formula for any compound. An empirical formula is really just another vocab word we're going to have for all the compounds are in their simplest form or reduced. Okay? So we just got to reduce them. So the empirical formula is the reduced formula again, like I said. Um, if I can divide by two, I got to do that. If I can divide by three, I got to do that. So, excuse me, right off the bat, I see that with this. Two and four, I can divide both by two. So the, the, material, the empirical formula will be NO2. Okay. Um, what is common in three and nine is three. So if I divide both by three, I will get CH3. Okay, um, six, twelve, six. In this case, like six can go into both, so that's going to be C H two O. Four and ten. Does four go into ten? Mm, nope, not so much. I cannot have any of my subscripts be um, part numbers. That would be two point five, right? And that no decimals at all. We got to have whole numbers. So let's divide them both by two. I'll get B two. H5 and an odd even. I know I can't do anything with that. And then C5H12, well, that is both the molecular and the empirical formula. So molecular formula is going to be the next video. I'll tell you real quick, that's kind of like the real deal, what it is on the ground. The empirical formula that we just came up with is the simplest way of breaking something down. What is its simplest constituents? So I could do something like saying, oh, this times, you know, 2, and I distribute my 2 over becomes N204, or maybe it's times 3, or maybe it's times 4, and I can make different molecules, but basically that's it. So what is the empirical formula for all these guys? I'm going to let you kind of go at this. Um, let me pick one I see maybe I could do, how about H2O2? I can divide both by two, so it's HO with a one subscript on each, which I don't need to write. Let me see you do the practice. And here's where things get a little bit difficult, is that whole percent formula by mass. So I'm going to skip over the practice and do this piece with you, because this is going to take a little bit more tutoring. All right, so it says you always assume we have 100 grams of something. We're going to do that because it's easier to do percentages with 100, right? Convert from grams to moles, divide all the mole numbers by the smallest mole number. Okay, so let's see if we can do that. Okay, so if I assume I have 100 grams and it's 46% carbon and 53% nitrogen, then see this conversion right here is super fast because this, because it's, 100%, you know, 46% of 100% is 46 grams. So that is very pretty easy. So now what I need to do is I need to convert into grams or into moles. So now I need to know on my reference table, what is the gram formula mass of carbon? Well, it's 12.011. In our case, 12. I'm just going to use 12 if that's okay with you guys. So I'm going to divide that by 12. I'm going to say 46. 0.2 divided by 12. I've made some mistakes on some previous um, calculating, so I'm going to whip out my handy-dandy calculator so Mr. Milk stop making all of those mistakes. Whoops. Let's say I made a mistake in the calculator. So how this goes. Divided by 12. I have 3.83, and that is pretty darn close to 4. All right, and then I have 53. 0.8 divided by what is nitrogen's gram formula mass? Nitrogen is 14. So let me divide that by 14. 53.8 divided by 14. And I have 3.84. Oh, sweet. So 3.84. Oh, look. 3.84 and 3.83 are pretty much. the exact same number. So if I take, I'm going to cross off this 4. If I say, oh, 3.83 divided by 3.84, that equals basically 1. So I'm in a 1 to 1 ratio. 
For every one of these I have, I have one of these. So that is C N. Bam is my formula. See how we did that? I think we need to do another one. Let's do another one. Um, it says, hey, remember we have to have a whole numbers for subscripts, of course. So let's do oh oh look. Sorry guys, I did it all right on that page. Remember it's gonna be C and N. My bad. My bad. I was all in a hurry to do another one. All right, so it says a compound containing 24 grams and 32 grams of O. Calculate its empirical formula. Hey, look, because I'm already in grams, I don't have to assume 100 grams, right? So it's 24 grams of carbon. And I know that carbon is 12, gra 12 grams per mole, right? So let me do 24 divided by 12 equals 2. And I got 32 grams of oxygen. And I know oxygen is 16, right? So I'm going to do 32 divided by 16. And oh, doesn't that equal 2? So that's 2 to 2. C, 2, O, 2. And doesn't that, I'm actually supposed to divide these to get 1, right? And if I did it, if I just put in the 2 to 2, I would see that that has to reduce to C, 1, O, 1. Carbon monoxide. Okay. All right, now we're getting a little trickier. It says a compound contains 0.5 moles of carbon for each one mole of hydrogen. Calculate the empirical formula of this compound. Hence, start with number three. That gives me the ratio 0.5 to 1. Okay. So basically, I have half. I could, if you wanted me, I could flip this or I could do 1 over, sorry, 1 over 0.5 equals 2, so it's a 1 to 2 ratio, or a 2 to 1 ratio, depending on how I do it. This one's going to be a 0. 0.5, and this one's going to be a 2, right? So it's a 2 to 1 ratio. For every half a mole of this, I have a whole mole of this, so I'm going to have more hydrogen than I'm going to have carbon, right? So for one carbon, I'm going to have two hydrogens. Okay, i got to have double the moles. Um, okay, number three and number four. And oh, look at number five. How about I do five? Let's do five. Let me extend this page. Let's do five because this whole rest is oxygen. Well, if 67.1% zinc, that's going to go to 67.1 grams of zinc, right? Because we're going to assume 100%. And it said. The rest of it's going to be oxygen, so that's 100 minus 67.1, which is 32.9% or grams oxygen. So I got to divide these numbers by their masses, right? They're, that I look up on the periodic table. Zinc's molar mass is 65.4, so I have 67.1 divided by. 65.4 and oxygen is 32.9 divided by 16 and I'm going to get roughly 1 and 2 right I'll give you the exact number so you can believe that I know what I'm doing 67.1 divided by 65.4 is pretty much 1 1.03 and then I have 32.9 divided by 16 equals 2.06. And then, oh, look, this is 1 to 2. So zinc is 1, Zn1, oxygen 2. Empirical formula. I can't reduce that anymore. But so not only did we learn how to do empirical formulas, we learned how to do the grams into empirical formulas. So it is going to be a little bit more complicated than just molecular formulas but actually no molecular formulas is endless because it could be any number of them so i'll take that right back we do have um practice packet to do 30 to 31 and you have another castle learning on just empirical formulas quick five questions go to town kept it under 10 guys sorry it took so long see you tomorrow tomorrow